Well, 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 look who's back. Big old Spaghetti Hair is once again back in the battle station. And I want to say, hey, once again, happy holidays. We're back from the uh, forest right now. I'm just getting set it up myself. So uh, I'm sure that there's going to be all sorts of fuck ups with this. But please do bear with me. No pun intended. And uh, we have a lot to talk about with not only Bitcoin price action falling through with yesterday, which, yes, yesterday is still very much valid. Um, I want to talk about uh, actually all the videos that were just uploaded onto my uh, channel right here. So in order to explain this past situation, need to give you a little bit of background on what just happened uh, for like this last week, kind of around the Christmas time. It seemed like there was some sort of a group going around uh, flagging videos um, and taking advantage of uh, of YouTube's system, essentially, where, uh, you know, once a certain threshold is met with, um, with, with flagging videos, with reporting videos, um, no matter what it's from, you know, the channel gets a strike, essentially, which means that you're in kind of like YouTube jail. So <laughs> there was this whole conspiracy saying that like YouTube is playing their own coin now and that's that's why you know we're that's why they're banning all the crypto channels no it was just a group taking advantage of it I actually had a Twitter thread around that and um, and that was actually revealed by one of the by one of the YouTube reps um, in one of those threads so <laughs> I just want to say that uh, I had to make all my videos private during that time in order to kind of avoid that. And now I've brought them back. I'm sure that I brought back a lot of videos that I didn't mean to bring back. There's probably some ones that I'm already getting comments on right now that uh, are saying like, hey man, what the fuck is this? This is from like ages ago. Yes, it's, it's it, you know, it's an older video. It's just a mistake. So please do bear with me here. Um, you, know, if, you know, if there's any sort of weird things going on, just mark it off and uh, perhaps perhaps let me know on uh, on Discord if possible. Or if not, man, you know, that might be asking a little too much anyways. So um, I also want to say massive thank you for all the support during that. I mean, that was really phenomenal. And I also want to say, hey, you, you know, you really did help especially if you're retweeting or just spreading the awareness of that, you really did help the situation. And, uh, you know, never, never lose sight of that fact that you actually do have power. People think that in today's day and age, like we're just these little peons and we, and we're powerless and everything. No, that's only true. If you accept that, I mean, quite literally people did make a difference here. And I just want to say massive, massive thank you for, to, for anyone who went, you know, a little bit out of their way to, uh, to, to spread the awareness on that fact. And, um, now I think everything is mostly good <laughs> except for probably my own fuck ups, which is, which, you know, I'll, I'll tend to as they come. Um, what else we want to talk about? Um, yes. Yeah, so all the programs are on sale for 20% off. Uh, that is still running till the end of the year. In fact, I'll just go over to it right, right on over here. We got uh, six days left on this, so a little bit, a uh, little bit past the new year, I suppose. And uh, no code is needed on this, but I do want to say that uh, make sure that these programs are applicable to you. That's the technical analysis program, and the, also the options program. We'll be bringing back the jewel relatively soon as well. I know I did say later this week, and I still think that we can uh, adhere to that. But um, of course, you know, during during the holiday season, it is a little bit more difficult to uh, to organize those sorts of things. But the TA program is the all-encompassing program. It is a more than 35-hour uh, more than 35 hour long program at this point. And it is not just technical analysis, but also understanding underlying market dynamics, risk management, position management, and much more. You know, the program's actually doubled in size, as I said, um, from the genesis of it. So um, that one, again, very, 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 very dedicated and going to require a big time commitment as well as financial commitment as well. I do understand that these programs are priced a little bit more on the uh, on the higher side, but that is to curate a more selected community as uh, you will be getting access into the uh, into the members only Discord community and also access to a couple of proprietary indicators with that program. So. I just want to make sure that that is, you know, that is uh, set straight. Watch the video on here to make sure that it's, you know, it's going to go into a little more of an in-depth explanation of what it is. And um, and on top of that, you know, if you're if you're new to this, probably don't consider something like this at the start. Go through my free, uh, go through my free content first. Go through the TA 101 playlist first. Those are all 100% free, and so you'll probably get a good idea if this is something that you perhaps want to do or not. Um, the option, the master options program is similar to the TA program, but only with regard to the derivative products options so it's a it's it's a more difficult program it is also incredibly long a little bit less long than the TA program I believe um, but it requires a more steep learning curve and it will be assumed that you have a little bit of an understanding of TA coming into it as well so uh, if this one isn't applicable to you then it's very unlikely that this one is applicable to you right here so um, like I said we will be uh, we'll be bringing back the jewel uh, probably within this next few days 
um, you know, at most, maybe like a week or something like that. Still need to talk with the dev, but um, for now, that's all that I have to update right around there. Uh, the ja or sorry, the Jackie's Jackie's uh, psychology mentoring group is live, or sorry, it's not live, but the signups are live now. Uh, I posted a video about it with him um, a couple, a few days ago. Definitely go check that one out. It is, I believe, posted in the Treasures of the Kid. No, it's posted in the Psychological Series um, playlist, which I actually just brought back as well. Um, and that starts early January, and he's only going to be uh, he's only going to be having uh, five uh, five people in the group. Um, he also will do one on ones as well. However, that's going to be com uh, priced completely different, and um, information can be found on that video. And I believe I might even have a link in the in this video as well. And perhaps perhaps I'll start doing that. Um, Anyways, uh, what else we want to get into? Well, I think that's pretty much everything that I want to talk about. Um, I think it's time to get into some magic and money business right in over here. And uh, yesterday we were looking at this chart and still saying that overall short term, I am actually looking for some downside. Now we did have a quick little wick to the upside right in over here. But as everyone in cryptocurrency gets very excited about a $200 move, what are we really looking at right here? We're looking at a fucking downturn is what we're looking at. Even on a very low time frame, like a four hour, this is, this is a high, this is a lower high. This is yet again, another lower high. So we are training down on a four hour right now. We're training down on all higher time frames as well. So I would say that I still stick with what I said yesterday, that Bitcoin is very likely to come down to the to the bottom side of the range. Just based off this fact alone, the, well, not this fact alone. I mean, there's no fucking facts in TA. Uh, but looking at the two day, uh, looking at the two day doodles right here, we do see that Bitcoin is presenting some hidden bearish divergence uh, on our two day RSI right here, making a significantly higher high on RSI, making a lower high on price action. And in the context of an overall downtrend, and I would say that this likely nets us a, uh, again, same, you know, same thing as yesterday looking for a move down to the bottom side of the range somewhere between about 6900 and 7000 bucks um, probably do see a bounce on lower time frames from somewhere around there and then the games will continue once again now here's the thing though this is of course overall bearish and we do see that bitcoin is operating in a descending triangle actually on the lower time frames i'm just gonna let's actually get this guy right in over here yeah there we go Something like this is what we're doing. We can see that uh, as long as the two-day dildo is being held below and closing below the yellow 20 minute country damage on this time frame, we are, well, we are following the downtrend and this is a descending triangle. And we do have a nice uh, horizontal support coming in right around our last prior low, a uh, smidgen below about 6,900-ish region. So as long as we're operating within this, within this, uh, within the, within the bounds of this territory right here, we're not really, you know, we're not really like continuing trend to the downside. We're also not, you know, reversing trend back up to the upside, but this offers up the next sort of obvious way to judge this price action so fine well not finally we had this yesterday as well um but we have a very very obvious way to be trading this now of course it's not financial advice i'm, I'm not a financial advisor but if i was going to share what i'm what i'm looking for here i want to see either a breakdown below of this horizontal uh, around 6900 on a two-day total closing basis also a daily would do it as well or a close above this top or uh, basically anywhere above the 21 expansion mean average to the top side right around uh, 75 50 ish region both of those would be a change behavior well change behavior would be to the upside but because you know the behavior bends to bend to the downside and it is implied that we actually do break to the downside here because this is a descending triangle in the overall context of a downtrend in the overall context of a what's right now a bear market um on all higher time frames so uh, it is more likely that we actually do break out to the downside however i am a little bit more conservative in that in that regard um, because as I just make sure that I'm recording over here, okay, I am recording and my microphone's working. That's great. All right, good. <laughs> Get that out of the way early. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, but the assumption is that, yes, it actually likely does have, you know, the statistics are more on that uh, side. However, as with anything with technical analysis, it's all about a game of statistics, which, you know, for better or worse, um, don't always play out in that, in that, in that regard. But again, it gives us, you know, get, sorry, at least it gives me some sort of an edge right here, a close below here. And I'm looking for a measure move all the way down to uh, low 6,000s, about 61 to 6,200, very, very likely. Should also be in line with the volume profile in that measure move, I believe. Let's see, yes, indeed it is. The last of the Mohicans for this higher value nose is coming in right around, yes, uh, 61 to 6,200. So I do like that. And not only that, but um, if we were to draw a trend line, a descending triangle trend line, uh, you know, governing all the lows that we put in thus far, you do see that that would actually be meeting up with the trend line. Of course, if we were to sort of extrapolate a date at which this could happen, as uh, you do see that this is starting to wedge itself in a little bit more aggressively, it would happen somewhere very, very likely right around here, which would be uh, between the first and second week of January. So we probably have some more sideways to go. I don't think that we're actually ready to break the lower time, or sorry, we're, we're actually ready to break the support down around here. And also it could be that we just don't break it at all. 
all. I mean, we could actually break above the 21 exponential moving average right here, and then I'd actually target a move into the, well, I mean, very, very extremely likely 7,800, but probably higher than that. I would be looking for a move up to about 83 to 8,500 in this pocket right here, which I'll actually mark out right now. So Bitcoin is now once again presenting, you know, actual edges to be made, uh, sorry, actual edges to, to base trades off of, which this is what I'm interested in as a trader. The last few days of trading action has been mostly flat, mostly sideways, which to me is not, uh, is not enticing. I haven't really been trading it. Also being in the woods, you know, with, with a lack of internet connection and also just trying to be around my girlfriend's family, um, you know, haven't really made me like the most, <laughs> the most active trader recently. Um, anyways. Okay, cool. So looking at this right here, um, we saw, we are still operating within that uh, realm. Um, now here's the thing, longer, longer term, we actually are constructing one massive falling, uh, falling channel right here, which actually typically do break out to the upside. Oh fuck, I forgot to mention this as well. Um, also with a lot of the videos that I put back up that, uh, that I just made public back in um, due to the whole ordeal, uh, there's probably like a bunch of ones that don't belong there. So if you're seeing like some weird videos or some shit like that, just, I don't know, if, if you could let me know, if not, well then leave a nasty comment and I'll figure it out anyways. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, there's, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I typically, so, or sometimes I'll upload videos to YouTube and never make them public, um, because you know, maybe there's something wrong with it. Maybe it's not ready. Maybe whatever the fuck reason, who knows? Um, you know, weird things happen. Um, but anyways, yeah, looking at this right here, that's essentially what I'm thinking. Um, looking at uh, two-day momentum oscillators, we've actually been moving the whole way up on two-day stokes, um, this 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 whole move actually, which Bitcoin, as far as the trend has gone, or as far as just, as far as just price action has gone, we've been mostly flat and actually just kind of curling back down. So whenever I see something like that, it's kind of telling me that the oscillator is, is, is being allowed to reset. And in this case, it would be, well, reset, you know, back to bearish terms. Um, um, however, again, I would not take the next trade to the downside until we actually fully and formally break below 6,900 on a two day or daily closing basis. Also a, a 12 hour probably does it as well. 12 hour probably does it as well for me. Any, anywhere below 6,900 and I'd be probably looking for this to, uh, to make its way down to, uh, you know, 65 and then probably 61, 62 after that. Um, and of course it's still just downtrend right here. Um, again, on all higher time frames that actually do matter, uh, daily looking kind of nasty. Have we taken out yesterday's low? No, we have not, but daily stokes are going to be curling back down, uh, or sorry, they're actually overlaid on top of each other right now as they approach the bullish control zone. But, uh, right now not looking all that hot. And I would say that that is again, more or less a bearish thing as we do have the same hit and bearish divergence actually present here between this point and this point. And we do see that the RSI is actually about to lose yet or looking like it wants to lose the exponential to be fair. Um, um, and any sort of a uh, any sort of a move down below this wick right here, I'd imagine below 7100, we probably do start to just initiate that move. Although, you know, getting the very low time frame range right now is not is not not easy. Um, all the oscillators are not being all that helpful right now, which is typically going to be the case during these long form consolidations, of which I believe we're in one right now. I'm sure that people are calling this a head and shoulders. It you could you could actually say that yes. Um, I wouldn't say that it's my first. Well, what about like a four hour? Could've, could've worked right. Now nah, it doesn't really look like one on a four hour, but mm, it does look like distribution nonetheless. So to be fair, you know, overall, I still, I do, I do still have to be remain, remain bearish. Again, anytime I see an, I see an overlay like this on all of the major movement averages, I am going to be bearish. Um, now I would be happy to switch that around again. I would be happy to switch that around again. If we do get back above and close above on a daily dollar closing basis, this 75.50 ish target right here, then yes, I would target a move towards 78.50 and very likely we would move our way beyond that to the mid eights. Um, although I would say that we'd have like a short start of step right here and then probably continuation. Anyways, um, looking at this right here, we do see all lower periods below higher periods. It's actually the 10 symbol is probably gonna cross to, uh, to the upside of the 21. Um, but I would say that all lower periods below higher periods, as far as the higher, uh, the higher period, um, Moving averages go is still pretty much damning enough. And we see all and we see all major moving averages with negative slopes set for the ten simple as well. Very very similar overlay to what we had back on over here in May and and and, and other previous times in Bitcoin's history. And this to me is you know th this is indicative of a bear market. We get the death cross right here. All lower periods below higher periods right here. Bitcoin's held below the twenty one the whole way, and Bitcoin is continuing to trend uh, to the downside as long as we are below the twenty one. Yes, the ten simple does kind of get those consolidations on the lower time frames quite well, but it is very visually apparent that as long as you're below the 21, it is 
still trending and it's still hot essentially and all you know all, all major moving efforts have, have negative slopes well we got the death cross right here green and purple we got all lower periods below higher periods right here and we got all negative slopes on all or all downward slopes on all these major moving averages and bitcoin is still uh, below the 21 exponential moving average right here on the daily so i'd say danger is still to the downside and we do see again momentum oscillators on a daily suggesting likely suggesting some down if we close any sort of a daily dolo uh later tonight at 7 p.m eastern eastern time below let's call it um, seven, even like 7200 probably does this we will see these open back up to the downside and the, funnily enough the daily stocks have not actually been as good as the 12-hour stocks but the 12-hour stocks are still coming down as well they're still quite they're still quite nose divey here and 12-hour RSI is certainly bearish as well in fact I'd call this a little bit more of a head and shoulders on the uh, on on the 12-hour RSI than I would say on price action and I do put a lot more weight on that in fact um, we do see volatility still expanding on the 12 hour, which is quite interesting to me, which tells me that um, this is, you know, we're still trending here. And in this case, the trend is down. So, well, we're more likely to go down. Uh, looking at the very low time frames, which we haven't looked, which I haven't looked at at all today. This is a completely fresh look for me. We see four hour Stokes having a fresh cross to the downside. We see four hour RSI bearish. We see four hour Jewel giving you a sell signal as well, or continuation sell signal, I should say. I don't really like taking um, signals within this uh, region right here, but this would be saying, hold your shorts or add on to your shorts that you started from back on. Um, wherever this price point was, this was somewhere right around 7,600. So um, still saying that there is pressure to the downside, apparently. Looking at uh, four-hour historical volatility percentile, we are expanding once again as well. We are above the moving average on it, and I would say that we are probably going to see that... Um, well, yeah, I mean, if we, I'd expect another spike if we, you know, if we do spike down, it's, you know, it's telling you that we're still trending here. Again, the trend is down. Uh, looking at three hour, three hour, same sort of thing. Three hour Stokes guy, uh, guiding the way. Three hour RSI bearish. Three hour uh, Jewel not giving you the same sell signal, but that's okay. The four hour should be more powerful, anyways. Um, two hour, basically same thing right here. Although we do see that the two hundred simple is acting as that governing support. Um, you know, I, I think that on these very low time frames right here, it makes it in like these longer form consolidations. I don't trust them as much. I would not put as much weight on it. But hey, you know, if we do start opening and closing two hour dildos below this, that actually has been a decent enough you know um, signature on Bitcoin's price action to what we're actually doing. And that's probably going to be that's probably going to open up the doors for the next move down below seven thousand. Um, what about hourly? What's the hourly doing? Uh, hourly is pretty beat up here, to be fair. <laughs> hourly is very beat up. So again, lower time frames tell me that um, we probably it's on like some sort of fucking palm read or some shit. The lower time frames though are likely saying though, um, if we do break to the downside, I don't believe we have enough momentum to break the macro area, which the macro area once again is governed by the two-day 200 simple or two-day or bit or basically the last two-day low, which is about 6,900 anywhere between that range, 7,000 and 6,900. I don't think that we have enough momentum to actually break uh, below there um, and like continue trending below there but i do think that we have enough momentum to get down there probably play out a bounce we'll come back reassess the bounce and you know as long as the bounce fails to get back above 7500 or 7550 it's still heavily bearish um and if it gets back above it'd still be bearish on the long term but i would be looking for probably another thousand dollar rally to the upside um looking at the bitcoin vwap ratio right in over here still heavily bearish um very very nasty very fucking nasty although i would say that it has lost a tinge of its nastiness as you can see the pink is actually above the regression where my cursor currently is right now which does offer a little bit of hope, I suppose. Um, if you know, if we were to see the purple cross the pink back up to the upside, then yes, that would start to look a little bit better, um, and and probably put a brevity on this uh, downside displeasures. But um, that's still well far away, so I do want to put the spotlight on that. But it's still more or less bearish, I suppose. You still go with the former assumption until it fully has a reversal there. Um, let's go check out the expected moves chart with regards to historical volatility. Um, we do see that essentially, you know, this is this is telling us that the range is likely to continue. We see the first innovation bringing us between about uh, 69.50 and uh, 73.50-ish region. So that's still within the context of the downtrend, but it doesn't break any major areas. It would basically allow us to test the downside of the range, maybe even test the upside resistance once again, and um, and nothing really breaks there. And that's you know the most likely thing to happen here. 32% chance that we actually break to one side or the other outside of that range, which um, in this case, you know, to the downside would be would obviously be a lot more a lot more nasty because we actually would be breaking some pretty uh, some pretty major things down here whereas 7350 to the upside isn't really like a macro area 7550 is where it starts to actually matter 7600 7550 to 7600 is kind of
kind of where it starts to matter. So that would be, um, well, that would be between the first and second innovation. So that would be about 16% chance only on one side, maybe somewhere like 16 to 10% chance that, that that happens to the upside, whereas to the downside a little bit more likely. But this is really just telling us that we're probably likely to range here. We're probably unlikely to break the range, uh, so to speak. Um, okay, already. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? How long have we been doing this? We've been doing this for 20 minutes already. I actually do have to be a little bit more quick today um, as I do a few errands to take care of during this morning. Uh, but I will be likely on Twitch later, so I'm really looking forward to bringing those back because those are really, really fun. And um, feel free to join on in. I will have a link in the description of this video as well for that. Um, okay, what else do we want to look at? Um, we haven't really looked at a three-day or anything like that. Uh, three-day, pretty nasty close yesterday. It does look like we want to test the downside once again. Uh, 200 simple coming in right around 6900 hundredish region again i don't think that we actually have enough momentum to break it from here but i do think that we likely test it um looking at uh do we do we see anything on the weekly i think the weekly is the next big piece of course and we are going to see weekly close for CMEs later today um, as well. And I would say that if CMEs close anywhere above or below, or sorry, anywhere above the 89, which is uh, 7250-ish region, I do think that it's likely that we, you know, we, we drag on this range a little bit longer. If we close below 7250, which is actually kind of looking likely right now, um, then I do think that we'll probably, have, you know, we'll, we'll probably fill out the top side of the range again coming into next week. But pressure is going to be the downside, and uh, and I would be looking actually for a break probably early January. Um, of 2020, uh, like very likely to the downside. Uh, let's go to actually look at CMEs right here, and you can actually see that the 89 is actually providing the resistance for this, although you can see that there's a great difference between that and spot. I would go with spot for that one right now just because um, CMEs are, they uh, they don't have enough history to really populate a, a, a worthwhile uh, one on this guy. Uh, looking at the daily, um, we've been held below and rejected below the 21x much moon average the whole way through. As I've said the last few days, I am not bullish on Bitcoin as long as we are closing below that on a daily build closing base, especially on CMEs. And uh, this pressure downside here, I mean, all these wicks to the upside are bare wicks, of course. We have the death cross running over here. And throughout this whole move, this whole fading of this move to the downside, or sorry, the, the, the whole move that, you know, started the upside and, and now getting faded, the daily soaks have been working their way up the whole time. So we're using up momentum while price action is really not doing all that much and still maintaining the downtrend. And we do have, of course, hit and bearish evidence very much present on the daily here as well. So I do think that is quite likely that we actually get brought down back around here. Um, what else do we want to look at? Um, um, um. Yeah, let's start to look at all the other bullshit for a second. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter uh, video here. I'm curious what people think of a, of a shorter format, like a 20 to 30 minute video rather than like a 40 to 50 minute video, which I, for whatever reason, have a very difficult time producing. <laughs> for for uh, for whatever reason, I just can't stop, man. This is for the TA autists like myself. Um, you know, if you're just looking to, if you're just looking to like pop in and pop out, you probably already left the video like, I don't know, after minute five or 10. <laughs> so fair enough. Um, I completely understand. If we get the fucking dominance up, that would be great, though. All right, you know what? Fuck it. Um, I do think it's worthwhile to point out that gold is actually looking well over here. Um, you know, gold actually did have a nice rally, and we and, and as we showed yesterday, there is a good correlation between gold and Bitcoin on the macro. Um, so fair enough. You know, gold actually pulling through here doesn't bode well for Bitcoin longer term. Perhaps yes, as long as you know, sixty nine hundred doesn't really break on a higher time frame closing basis. Uh, you know, I, I, I suppose Bitcoin, you know, we actually do see some a lot of similarities between the two, especially looking at the correlation coefficient, which I'll bring up really, really fast right now. Don't want to get stuck too much into this and we'll get onto the shit coins. I mean, the altcoins and uh, then I'll probably leave you off. Um, but yeah, looking at the weekly right here, we do see a very strong correlation, actually. So that does speak to the macro. It doesn't mean the micro, you know, Bitcoin could still go sideways down, you know, for the next couple of weeks and still maintain this. But uh, bit, uh, but gold kind of um, uh, breaking out to the upside here does look a lot better. Weekly or sign gold looks healthy. Weekly stokes on, on gold look healthy. Price structure looks healthy as well. And we are expanding volatility to the upside as well. So I do like all these things um, kind of converge with each other. Um, so that, you know, te uh, historically speaking, that would be better for Bitcoin. But we don't really see the same sort of um, indicator overlays that we see on gold as we see on Bitcoin right now, which I would say certainly do align with a little bit more uh, bearish, inherent bearishness on um, on Bitcoin in comparison to gold. Anyways, um, actually, fuck the shit coins today, man. Let's go. Let's go look at some. Uh, let's go look at some Forex. The, the fucking shit, the shit coins are doing whatever Bitcoin's going to do. 
It's almost, almost always going to be true. Almost always. Uh, let's see. Uh, Euro dollar looking like it wants to actually potentially break out here. We are putting an ascending triangle on the lower time frames. Now, I would say I would certainly wait for a daily total close above 111 spot 619. Um, but if we can get that, this starts to look okay. Uh, the weeklies find it, find it back off over here. And if we could, especially if we can get a close, a weekly close above that region, I would look for extension over the next few months, uh, you know, first quarter of 2020, perhaps back up to this region over here, like 113, 113 and a half region. Uh, looks okay. Uh, what about pound yen? Um, I still stick with what I said a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a major, massive uh, lower high in the greater context of things. Now, while we are having a bounce right now, that's completely fine. But as long as this bounce fails to get essentially back above, like, 144 on a closing basis um i i think that it's irrelevant uh this is you know likely to come down further uh so yeah we are having a little bit of a bouncy bounce right here but you're likely to have a bounce after a pretty nasty move to the downside after uh, like this i think that the uh, pound yen probably does fall further um on its face i do think that this is a macro lower high right here again we have massive hidden bearish divergence and probably longer term i don't know sometime sometime like after, i don't know maybe like february or something next year probably come back down to like 138 or something like that we'll see if i eat my words on that one but um does look kind of nasty uh traditional markets closing on new all-time highs once again uh we've been bullish on this one for a while i'd still be bullish on it right now i mean this looks fucking phenomenal and what we can once again we've we've done we've done this the whole way through just walking it up like the the pivotal point where i'd no longer be bullish um well not even no longer bullish but we can walk it up once again to this area right here um this area right here which is now th three three twenty and a half <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Um, now, I would say that that's not like a death sentence, but that would get rid of the short-term uh, bullishness, in my opinion. Now, what would be a little bit more um, inherently nasty would be any sort of a daily little close below 318 region. Uh, that's where I start to look for a bigger pullback. But longer term, this looks very, very good. We are going to be closing monthly relatively soon, and I'll just I'll, I'll actually close with uh, Bitcoin's monthly as well. This monthly looks very good. I, I would remain bullish on traditional markets fundamentally and technically. Um, looking at uh, Bitcoin's monthly, um, I do think that it is a very, 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 very appropriate to be keeping the eyes on the yellow 21 exponential average right here. This is what I used as a, um, this is what I used in traditional markets to judge stocks, equities over the long term. Uh, they generally bullish, generally bearish, and it works pretty damn well for Bitcoin as well, even though Bitcoin's younger um, in its uh, in its history. But uh, if we do close anywhere below the 21, which is 7,100, I would look for a very much longer term downside move um, into the uh, into the mid 5,000s, probably even 4,000s longer term. We do see momentum also is certainly more bearish. Uh, monthly stokes down, rejecting the bullish control zone. Monthly RSI rejecting the bullish control zone, rejecting the uh, uh, re rejecting the exponential and down. Looks like it wants to come back down and test around at the very least the bearish control zone, which is not good. Um, so yeah. I think that's probably a good place to cut it off. I'll start to wrap this bitch up. Again, there's really no more, there, there's really not much more to say other than this. 21 exponential mean average to the upside. If we do break that to the upside, very, 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 very likely. 78, 7,900. I think that's unlikely to happen though, um, given the trend, given the structure, and probably does get extension from there if we did initiate the upside to like 83, 8,500. What I think is a lot more likely is that we do come back down, test the downside of this between 69 or 7,000, probably bounce a little bit there, figure out the bounce. And if we get any sort of a close below this prior, this last prior load around uh, 6,900, 69, 60, or actually it's kind of like 6,850. Um, uh, on like a daily or or even like a 12 hour closing basis, I would look for extension down to the next uh, bottom side of the range in the lower 6,000s down around here in line with this uh, descending trend line right here. Also in line with the volume profile, if we can get this out right in over here and also kind of a historical level as well, as you can see coming back in from um, what is it, uh, 2018, this whole base of 2018, I'm sure a lot of people remember uh, that is still going to be very much valid. And that is aligning the last of our uh, the, kind of like the last of that range right there. Um, so I would be looking for a bounce there if we, if we were to do that but again i don't think that that happens today or tomorrow i don't even think that happens this week probably have probably have to wait until we get 2020 like uh, i don't know a week or two into it um and then we can come back to that idea but for right now very low time frames you know it's it's floaty it's flighty i don't see any reason to not be looking for downside here especially as long as we're below this like this last little scam wick high which was uh 7432 if we do get back above 7432 it doesn't really do too much for me it's really got to be this guy right here 7550 7600 because we've had so much um uh so many rejections around that region that seems to be the big one to me so i'm gonna cut it off right there i'm gonna be posting this video um again there's probably a bunch of videos on my youtube that just got caught in the crossfire 
I'll probably have to like go through and private them or maybe not private. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's, 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 it's a headache right now. Um, I do apologize for the inconveniences. And of course, um, I'll be back on later with some Twitch, which with, with some Twitch, Twitches, 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 whatever the fuck. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, once again, a reminder that the programs are on sale for 20% off. Um, that's going to do it for right now. I want to wish you all well, take care and until next time.